Hello, family. It's Ariana, your tarot life coach, bringing you your new moon in Capricorn. Re big baby. Big, big hugs. Lots and lots of love. High fives and some damn dirty shoulder rubs. What's up, guys? How is 2021 treating you? I'm laughing. I know I probably shouldn't, but hey, you, you got to have humor in life, right? So with that being said, the way this reading is going to be set up, we're going to definitely talk a little bit about the astrology. Again, I am not an astrologer. I dips and I dabble. All right. And then we're going to go into the pick a card energy. You can pick one, two or three. You can pick them all. You can pick and choose what you want to listen to. <laughs> but with that being said, I just want to say thank you for sharing your space with me. Thank you for sharing your time with me. I hope that these reads benefit you. And if they do, be sure to hit that like, that share and even subscribe. Now, with that being said, Wednesday, January 13th, big baby, 2021 is the big day of the new moon and Capricorn. Now, this new moon is going to be conjunct Pluto. So what does that mean? Well, Capricorn, the planet of structure and rules and government and things of that nature, is going to be right next to Pluto, who is all about change, transformation, death, things of that nature, like we are rebirthing, we're done. So there's a whole new life coming forward, right? And we're initiating that at the beginning of the year. The next three months for us are kind of like growing pains as we try to elevate and move to that higher consciousness, okay? So a transformation in our structures, our belief systems, and one way to kind of approach this is to have like those journaling moments where you can ask yourself, how have I grown? How have I evolved with hindsight 2020? Click, click, all right? How have I grown? How have I adulted, changed, become more spiritual? Those kinds of things and kind of working with that. Now this new moon is at the 23rd degree, which the 23rd degree is that of freedom, right? Because in the 20, the number 22 is significant. It's a master number. Number because it is a master builder. So now that you have built your foundation with the 22, you are on the 23rd degree of that, meaning you are ready to break free of these new structures. Now, aspects that are going to be affected is Mars square Saturn. So this is like bringing on feelings of frustration, self-consciousness, all of that's coming to the forefront. You're wanting to push forward and the universe is like, hold up, Jack, you need to step back. All right. So approaching things with an attitude of gratitude, not trying to over overwhelm yourself and trying to do too many things at one time. Now, Jupiter is square Uranus also. So now we have two squares, right? And this is going to be at the one degree. Jupiter, a planet of abundance and expansion, is having a, a, a tension conversation with Uranus with him being so unpredictable. So what does that make you think about? Well, you might think that things are going to pan out one way, big baby, but they're going in a whole nother way if Uranus says, oh, we're jumping ship. So patience is going to be very thin, but it's going to be needed because there's a lot of rebellion in the air so be aware of sudden decisions okay just pay attention to the energies that are around why are you wanting to do this is this an irrational way of going okay now Mercury, the planet of communication and information, is also square that of Uranus, which can bring unexpected news and a change of plans, a change in direction. Just a lot of changes are coming. But that's what squares are for. <coughs> Sorry, squares are here to teach us, to help us move, to help us grow. And so we're getting this energy at the beginning of the year. Now, Venus trying Uranus is that also at that one degree. I almost feel like the planets are like, we got to start over. Like, we got to wipe this slate clean. And Venus is known as the planet of love. I put the finer things in life. You know, money, love, sex, beauty, whatever. But it's trying to Uranus, and this can arouse. Wow, yeah, baby. And bring some good things to your love life, to your financials, to experimentation, and to the bedroom. This is some really positive flow energy, and it's a good aspect to kind of help that tension with all the squares that we're going to be experiencing. So as you're moving forward with this new moon, energy the way these reads are going to go is we do mind body and soul we talk about the energy of the new moon coming in then we go into a basic read we clarify we go into a little love we go into a little health and then we're going to break it down with your crystals messages from ancestors and a uh, little ritual that you can do all right so deep deep breath ah yes big baby what's it gonna be one two or three 
Okay, card number one. It's time to jump into your read. Of course, we have the moon in Capricorn, but it's in the eighth house. And for those of you who don't know what the eighth house signifies in astrology, this is ruled by the sign of Scorpio, which rules death, rebirth, transformation, intimacy, sex, grrr, trauma, psychological issues, fears, fears, power, control, finances, debt, other people's monies, taxes, inheritance, investments, and anything with the occult, okay? Now, looking at this, it's time for you to defend your goals as if they were life or death, okay? So looking at 2020, like you took all the information in from 2020, and now you're here in 2021, you're looking at your goals, your, your initiatives, and you're like, I really want this to happen, okay? So it's time for you to buckle up Buttercup and really make it happen, okay? Now, mentally, it's time to accept the day-to-day -day reality and getting and using power. Hour. So it's like, okay, let's see. I really want this to work out for me. I really want this to happen. But it's like, what are you doing day to day to make this goal happen? It's time for you to face reality. Now, let your feelings tell you how to, which this is your intuition, use the most business-like way. And for me, when I think business-like way, I think a very Capricornish, like earth sign energy, like this is what I want, this is how I need it, and this is how it's gonna be. Thank you very much, you have a nice day. It's not an emotional thing. I know what I need, I know what I gotta do, and this is how it's gonna happen. But they're saying using other people's resources. So let's sum this up. What's going on here is you're using your hindsight of what happened in 2020. You're looking at what happened, what you learned, and how you've grown. And now you're using this new moon to catapult you into where you want to be. Will it happen immediately? No, because Capricorn energy is slow and steady wins the race. It's like you got to grow up. This is the energy of Capricorn. You want change. You want it to happen. You don't like the old way of doing things. But what are you doing to get you to the new way? All right. Now, mental, spiritually, you have this beautiful car card called Pyramid of Light. Okay. Okay. Pyramid of Light comes through, and this energy is telling you that it's time for psychic protection. So I talk to a lot of people who are like, oh, I really want to be a reader, and I, I took all my cards to this place, and I read for like 40 people, and blah, blah, blah. It was so good, and I'm like, oh, wow, did you clean your energy? What happened next? And they're like, what are you talking about? Did you clean in between reads? Did you clear your deck? So I feel like there's certain things that need to happen for you to understand, like you are really growing exponentially in your vision, in the way that you're trying to grow spiritually. But unfortunately, at this time, it's like you're not protecting yourself. Also, if you felt like there's an energy or you're feeling kind of bogged down or like blocked or foggy, it's time to clear your energy. Psychic protection is important. It's just like locking the door. OK, so if you know you have something valuable, are you just going to be like, hey, guys, look at everything I have. I'm going to leave right here. OK, thank you. Awesome. No, you make sure that it's under lock and key it's protected and it's taken care of. And that is what your spirituality is about. That is what your gift is about. So for me, when I do readings, I have a little certain rituals that I do to clear my energy before and to clear my energy after to close out the session, to close out for the other person, prayer, meditation, shower, a bath, whatever it is. And when I have really heavy clients, like I'm, I can still feel their attached energy. I do have to do an egg cleanse. I do have to clean with certain herbs. So those are things that you learn as you go, all right? But psychic protection is definitely needed. Now, as you're moving forward physically, you're really thinking about your family, and I think it's time to have protection for the family out. It's important for you to protect the ones that you love. So covering your family. When I clear my energy, I clear my children's energy. I clear my house's energy. I put stuff in front of the house. I put things in my car. I grid everything, and I make sure things are protected. You are very concerned about family issues. Some of y'all are thinking about traveling to see your family, or you traveled to see your family, and now you're like, oh my God, I hope everything is okay. All right? Now, on a soul level, you have this beautiful card called Astereth, okay, and you see there's segment. She's sitting on this horse. They're jumping over this man is ruled by the number seven She's the seventh netter in this card and that's the way they describe the families and it's from the book of doors the divination deck So this lion-headed fierce goddess is introduced to Egypt from Syria during the 18th dynasty Astereth identified as the goddess Ishtar 
and the goddess Ashtar. So this energy, if, you, if you've ever watched my videos in the Babylonian tarot, Ishtar is the high priestess. This is the goddess of love and beauty, okay? Now, what she is coming in to tell you is that on a soul level, you're about to beat your enemy. You're about to beat them to the ground, boo bear, okay? And sex is going to become a lot better. You're going to become more sensual. You're going to have more joy in that, okay? And there's possible travel coming in for you. So really interesting energy coming in. Overall, when I'm looking at this, I'm going to tell you, like, if you've ever thought about working with candle magic or anything with fire, fire is a wonderful element to clear cleanse, transform. Okay. So with that being said, I'm going to be using a new deck. I'm not the best at it. It's called the Muse Tarot. Wonderful deck. And we're going to go into a basic read. I'm going to clarify with another deck called the Light Seekers, which is by the same um, creator, Christine Allen. I think that's her name. Christine. No, Christine Ann. Chris Ann. I'll get it right. Okay. So I'm just going to pull randomly. Okay, there's the first ones. And how they fall is how they're going to fall, okay? So you see how you have a lot of new beginnings coming in here for you. Very beautiful energy, okay? But we are still getting bogged down. So as I'm looking at these cards, I see a lot of yellow. This immediately tells me that we're dealing with solar plexus energy. We're dealing with confidence. We're dealing with the third chakra. We're dealing with having to have... I, we don't even know how to come forward. We don't even know what to say. We know we need to wake up. We know we need to change. This is the awakening card. This is the judgment card. How unfortunately, the overall energy is like, you know what you got to do, but something's holding you back. At the bottom of the deck, and I'm just going to read it how it comes out. I have the Knight of Materials, which is the Knight of Pentacles, coming through with the Ten of Pentacles. But a tower moment is going to happen. This tower moment has to happen. It's like it all has to fall apart in order for things to get moving because there was too much manipulation and you were stuck in a situation that wasn't going anywhere again the yellow the sun okay solar plexus so what do we have coming in here we have the ace of voices the ace of swords look at this beautiful card the owls coming through we're getting messages from ancestors you're like getting the vibes but you're so busy looking back you're like wait a minute what happened why did that happen and that isn't necessarily a bad thing because when i was talking earlier in the introduction that you probably fast forward to because i talked too much it was important for us to reflect it's important for us to get that hindsight because our ancestral messages are going to be coming in more, okay? So this is telling you like, hey, you need to pay attention. Good things are coming because the six of pentacles, the six of materials is coming through. The help is coming through. This is a reciprocal exchange of energy between speaking what you want into existence and actually freaking doing it because there's been this habit that you have where you're like, I really want this. Oh, I don't know. And then you don't finish it. And the, the universe is like, you need to start what you finish. Now, the ace of inspiration is this hidden influence. You're going to start getting more downloads. You're still looking at what happened in 2020, and that's quite okay. Okay, it's okay to reflect, but you're having a lot of confidence energy coming in. The knight of swords is coming in, or the knight of voices. This energy scoops in. It's bringing you clarity. Okay, but just because you're having all of these breakthrough moments, okay, and this is where people get very upset when they're having a spiritual awakening or they're growing and they're changing, it leaves you feeling broken with the three of swords. So you might be walking away from a relationship, something that you've been in for years, a job, something is changing. You have these new beginnings, but in order to have these new beginnings, we got to close the door on something and you may be getting the information, the clarity of things of that nature. So let's look at this Ace of Voices real quick. What does the Ace of Voices want card number one to know? I'm just pulling the high priestess like, boo, you already knew what was up. And I'm telling you, some of y'all are carrying that Ishtar energy, that high priestess energy. You are holding it within you. Your psychic powers are truly developing. Okay. 
who is coming to help with the six of pentacles what's coming in with the six of pentacles the wheel reversed is how i pulled it out that's how i'm going to put it down i kind of feel like the six of pentacles is saying hold up hold up hold up you remember how it didn't work you remember how that didn't work would you just please stop doing it that way and try something new okay because it's time to try something new and then we're moving forward okay so first it's like whoa hold up that didn't work so there's some things that need to be left behind so the six of swords is saying in order for things to get moving we got to have confidence 46 comes down to a 10 we got to work from our solar plexus energy and we got to speak it into existence are you willing to speak it into existence are you willing to birth something new you want to birth something new but you got information and you're just like oh my gosh y'all ever like had this experience where like everything's going really good in your life you've moved on from your ex you moved on from this whole situation or whatever the hell it is and all of a sudden you get a text message or you get a message or someone tells you something and you're just like all of a sudden all that hard work you did all that energy you've expelled suddenly falls down the drain and that is where we have to realize no one can take our power you are calling your power back but as you're calling your power back it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt okay so this is where we have to get out of this everything has to be great and I can't be sad it's okay to be sad. It's not okay to be sad for an extended period of time, okay? Because then we let lower energy attach. It's okay to acknowledge that it hurts. It's okay to sit with it, acknowledge it, and we cope and we move through it, okay? So let's see what the Three of Swords is telling us. Why is the Three of Swords coming out? Should this be upright? I knew it. The lovers reversed, okay? So there is an ending. It was because there was a bad decision. It could be causing you a lot of sleepless nights. However, two aces in your read is significant to possibly a marriage, a contract, something new is coming in. But however that new is coming in, we have to know that there's an old way that has to go, right? It's going to change. It's going to be different. And that's okay. I feel like almost sometimes when things change, we develop this sense of like, oh my gosh, you know, um, this has to be perfect. And if it's not perfect, then I didn't do something right. What does it have to be wrong or right? How about it just is? So I'm going to pull an Akashic Tarot card over the lovers to give you more insight. And let's see what this is about. Let's see. I'm going to pull this one on track okay but the on track was coming out reverse should it be upright yes okay i'm using my pendulum okay so you're on track the key is to trust your intuition you had a double six in here and you have a double ten this ten for some of y'all are leaving a job some of y'all are leaving the familiar and you're moving forward because you were spinning your wheels and the best thing was to move on with the information that you got instead of trying to wait for it to continuously change you have made a decision to move where you need to go you are putting attention where it needs to go so why is the awakening reverse what's going on with that because we need strength in order to get through that and there again is that leo energy that solar plexus yellow confident energy and at the bottom of the deck i have the star looking at me what's needed for you from this new moon is to look at what you need to break away from and it is what it's saying right there with the eighth house the intimacy the transformation the growth all of that energy is coming in to say wake up you've got to wake up something has to change and may not necessarily mean everybody else needs to change maybe it's the way you're reacting to everyone else okay i know not the kind of read you probably wanted now the the ancestral message that I have for you is offerings. Now, I do feel like if whoever works with a deity with the white owl or if the white owl signifies anything for you, they are asking for offerings. I offer offerings. You don't have to go and cook up a whole meal. It might be an apple. You might leave it by a tree. Whatever you want to do. But financial difficulties are going to be resolved soon. There is money coming your way. Focus on what you want rather than what you don't want. You are worthy. An attitude of gratitude is needed it's time to give back an offering could be like oh I'm gonna donate to this cause for children in the border towns who aren't getting enough food right I'm gonna I'm gonna offer this 
And when I give this, I'm giving this because my mother would have loved this. I'm giving, who's my mother's passed away. Or I'm giving this because my grandmother always gave to the community and I'm gonna go pick a family and I'm just gonna go buy their groceries in the store, whoever spirit leads me to. That's an offering, okay? And if you're doing it in the name of something, of your, of your ancestors or something, now putting their favorite food on the altar or putting a glass of water with a tea light and acknowledging them, putting her picture up, it's that simple but something needs to be offered okay and it's time for you to have faith the faith is not there there seems to be like a breakdown of the faith system and it's important to have faith in what you're doing okay so that was your ancestor message along with learning to align your life what is not aligned needs to change and that's going to get you back on track so for all of my people who are concerned with love, you know, I probably should have done this first because half the time people only want to hear about love, but there's more to life. <laughs> like your spiritual life is really important. For my singles, what do we have singles? And I'm just going to like put them all upright, okay? So we have here the Princess of Pentacles and the Eight of Wands. I got two messages immediately by looking at that. I'm going to say be careful. Don't overextend yourself. Don't have a lot of multiple partners right now because the Eight of Wands for me is a lot of quick communication because someone's going to take that communication and run. Whether this is with an earth sign or with someone who is very foreign to you, I feel like it's someone who's not like you at all. The conversation is going to be really fast. The energy is going to be really fast. Make sure it's what you want to invest in and be careful careful not to overindulge in alcohol okay and I'll pull an extra card for you singles what do we have singles what do we have I'm gonna go with which number number five La Sirena yes so I feel like this is that mermaid energy be aware not to go for all the shiny stuff look at this stuff isn't it neat why don't you think my collection's complete? A little mermaid energy going on here. So this is the energy of maybe you're chasing every new thing. And it's time for you to focus on what the communication is. Do their actions align with their communications before you have sex with them? Because that's what the Eight of Wands makes me think about. Lots of communication and a lot of fun, okay? Now, for my couples. What do we have for my couples? Couples, boot up. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know about that car. I'm gonna wait for it to fall. Okay, it fell anyways. God dang it. There's an ending. For some of my couples, there is an ending, and this is like the world is telling you, like, look, seriously. Why do you keep going back? Why do you keep going for this argument and saying everything's okay? That's that. No, I'm good. Everything's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay, but a decision has to be made. Like, you have to come to that conclusion yourself. No one can tell you you have to leave, all right? Unless the other person's like, you got to go, and it's their house, and you got to go. But in a relationship, your friends can tell you you need to leave somebody. Your family can. But until you make that utmost decision to stop getting stabbed in the back and expecting for things to change, you're not going to move forward. And remember, there's some of y'all that are leaving a relationship. Oh, I've got all kinds of cords falling out. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. El Pino. It's time to clear the energy. Pine is a very good source to clear. Okay, that's so why we got the pine saw. But even a pine cone on your altar to call in that earth element of cleansing. In Babylonian times, they used to use um, the pine cone to burn and sage and clear. It was representative of the pineal gland. So it's very important. This comes down to the number 49. 49 comes down to a 13. 13 comes down to a 4. It's time to clear your home. Okay? It's time to clean that energy. Now, your crystal is Unicanite. This is a really wonderful stone for dissolving the blocks and raising your self-esteem. It works with your heart chakra. And on a physical level, it works with the circulatory system and the heart so that you can have a speedy recovery. This crystal indicates that what is an underlying situation will soon be revealed once that cause is recognized. Release and healing will begin. There's this form of you having to let something go for something new to initiate. Now, when it comes to your health, you have that of the Queen of Pentacles. I love the Queen of Pentacles energy, and I love this card. It is from the Starman Tarot, and I love how she's conjuring up, like, financial abundance. I do think finances are coming in. And isn't it interesting, like, her dress actually matches that, um, that crystal. 
So anyways, the queen of coins or the queen of pentacles, this is a mineral rich diet is suggested. It's time for you to really watch your diet. The herb tied to this is marshmallow. It treats ulcers and stones in, urinary, uh, in the urinary tract track and improves your gut. It helps you reduce water retention, okay? So what I'm kind of picking up from this is really pay attention to what you're eating because we are dealing with solar plexus energy. Keep a food journal if you're really having allergies or you're having a lot of bloating so that you can keep up with what you're putting in so you know like, hey, this is making me feel bad. I probably shouldn't eat that anymore. Now, your ritual or what would help you move forward is that of willpower. The thing isn't that you can't do what needs to be done. The thing is that you're getting easily distracted by what needs to get done. It's called procrastination, all right? But it's also called trying to do the most. And a lot of people have a tendency to, to do five, to like 10 goals. They want 10 goals and they're like, I just want to be a better me. I just want to make more money. But, you know, that's a very broad statement. So break that thing down. How do you want to make more money? Oh, I want to increase clients client relationships, okay? I'm going to increase my prices in January. You know, those kinds of goals that are easily attainable, you can pay attention to them, you can gauge them and move forward. When you have such a broad goal or something so big, how can you really gauge if there's success and that's when you give up? So you have impulsive behaviors and possibly a lot of temptations and distractions that are just getting in the way and it's time for you to work through those. Now it gives you a little ritual here in the cards, but I'm going to tell you something that's helpful for me. Focus on what's what you want, not what you don't want. I am going, I am finishing my project. I have completed blah, blah, blah. I am successful. I am abundant. I, whatever it is, watch the words that you're saying stop saying I'm broke it's never gonna happen because you're cursing yourself it's time to speak blessings into yourself so one way to increase that is really working with the energy of mercury right because you're really using that mercurial energy communication motivation and we're using the color yellow which is going to work with a solar plexus and that would be a good day to do that would be a Wednesday to increase communication now if you're trying to increase abundance you're going to want to work with the color green for money you're going to work on Jupiter day on Thursday so you can even burn away some of those temptations and then go blow the ashes out or you can write down your list of what's not going to get in your way burn it and give it to the moon read it to the moon release it whatever you want to do it's your ritual but it's about stop getting in your own way and focus on what it is you truly want those things that you no longer desire those things that get in the way is what has to be released all right so that is your read number one i'll be back with a number two card number two it's your turn okay so let's jump into your read. You have the moon in Capricorn. Oh, I got that all jacked up. Hold on. But the seventh house flew out for you, okay? The seventh house. So what does the seventh house represent? The seventh house is ruled by, if that's Scorpio, by Libra. It's balance. It's fairness, all right? Relationships, partnerships, marriage, contracts, agreements, negotiations, and they have open enemies. I don't even know what an open enemy is. I guess they just wide out and in the motherfucking open, okay? So the moon in Capricorn is coming to you in your seventh house. This is not your chart. This is just the, the karma that's coming in. So it's telling you that the nurturing spiritually, the, ded the dedication to achieve balance. You're spiritually looking for balance. There might be a lot of chaos going on, a lot of things that feel out of order in anything that involves the seventh house. Now, feelings caused by or focusing on cooperation. You're starting to look around. You're like, wait a minute. Hold up. What is going on? This isn't fair. And so I kind of feel like because I'm looking at those goats and I'm looking at the other heads that are looking the other way. And I'm like, you know what? There are some people, maybe these are the open enemies that are possibly, you know, in relationships or in partnerships, things of that nature that you're just starting to see through. Okay. Now, reactions resulting from the rules imposed by your partners. Now, the reactions don't have to be negative, all right? So it could be a positive reaction, but it's it's, it's like you're starting to notice things that are happening and you're, you're having to discern. I feel like this energy is a lot of discerning energy because we are craving the balance needed to move forward, right? 
So, I'm just having all kinds of jacked up energy over here. The Ancient Power Mysteries. I love the Isis deck. Now, this is the Ankh. And it's really interesting because I'm, I'm going to explain this card to you in a minute. and talks a lot about the Ankh also. So, the Rattle of Isis. Okay? Its vibration reaches through your crown and enters your body, initiating great ancient power mysteries of sound and creative healing. Every time I see this card, I'm going to tell you this is about healing this is initiating that vibrational sound a lot of times when my my students can't calm down or when i can't calm down i will tell them follow the sound breathe don't think of anything but that sound and follow it and i keep moving it further and further away and I'll do it a few times because that not only clears the energy, but it also changes the focus, right? So when this card shows up, it's like sound healing is possibly needed. It's time to do some sound clearing, play some good Reiki music, ring those chimes, ring those bells. It's time to shift the way that you're speaking. Your words hold a lot of power. Our words can speak spells. That's why they're spelled spells, spelling. Okay, you are speaking life or death over yourself and others. Remember that. Your words are powerful. Your voice is powerful. Your voice is the mighty I am. Remember your power, okay? Focus on the energies and your words will help you align with your soul. It is important for you to speak kindly to yourself in this time of chaos, in this time of the unknown, and stop being so damn hard on yourself because people want you to perform like you're some circus person or circus animal, okay? No, we, we are in a damn dirty circus, but you have to be kind to yourself and set those standards up so that when that degenerative energy is coming through, you're like, whoa, nope, we're not going to have that. I'm going to clear it and I'm going to move forward. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't take constructive criticism, but there is a difference between somebody trying to help you and somebody trying to break you down. All right. Now, on um, a physical level, you're definitely working with your third eye. You have this energy of the sixth chakra with Metatron showing up. Very beautiful energy. You could even be working with... Um, sacred geometry okay because he is over sacred geometry but this energy that's coming is there, there's something new on the horizon you've been envisioning it that's why you've got to clear but it's time for you to focus on your personal vision maybe creating a vision board maybe looking at your goals and really sitting with them instead of just writing down lose weight um get a man i mean come on we have got to be more creative with our goals right i mean like if that's your goal it's your goal but how are you going to do that and are you going be specific about your man because the, the universe will send you men but it might not be the one you want so creating a clear picture of what it is that you truly want so that that vibration can come into your life now what's really interesting is that you have the number 40 showing up here and four is significant to that of your foundation and you have on a soul level, you have the card of Shen Er of the, the netter of pets okay card number two so we have the number 42, which comes down to a six. The six is significant of fun, pleasure, joy, creativity. However, Shen Er is war in heaven, circuit of heaven in the cosmos. It represents the harmonic order of creation in time. Now, with me reading harmonic order and you getting the ancient power mysteries, which is about music and essence of sound clearing there's something there that you might want to sit with and think about that in the year of 2021 how am i going to vibrate how am i going to use my essence my voice my words my power my mighty i am and as you think about that envisioning it in your third eye maybe if you're unable to vision that way you're unable to see it in your mind's eye you need to see it physically maybe it needs to be your phone um, backdrop. Maybe it needs to be on a vision board. Maybe you just need to put it where you can see it every day so that when you close your eyes, you remember that. Okay. This is chaos 
into cosmos. This is a war. This is things changing and shifting. It's everything changing. It's the establishment of order and harmony being restored. Oops, sorry. Now, with this energy coming in, I feel like this is happening in your home life. And home can be significant of the body and that of the home, right? And so I do feel like there's some form of clearing and cleansing. And just because we're in the new year doesn't mean that you have to wait to the end of the year to clean and cleanse, which is basically what number one got too. I do think that there's an energy of like, we need to keep cleaning and clearing our energies around here so that we can move forward. Okay. So that's what I have for you, mind, body, and soul. I am going to be using a new deck called the Muse deck. And, um, with this deck, um, I am not the most fluid with it, but we're going to work on it together. I'm clarifying with the Lightseer's deck. They're both created by Chris Ann. And then we will go into love and messages of the ancestors. Okay, I'm just talking a lot. So the queen of materials, which is the queen of coins, came out. I just love this vibrational energy of this card. It's so Guantanamera. Guajira <laughs> Guantanamera. Do, 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 do. I know, hot mess. These all fell out this way, and I'm going to check those to make sure because they just fell out of my hand. Upright, upright, and upright. Okay, we're going to go all the way upright with everything. I was using my pendulum. Bottom of the deck, what do we have? The nine of emotions, the nine of cups, big baby. We are dealing with wishes, hopes, dreams. Now, at the bottom of the deck, just going to go through the bottom. This could be for some, this could be for none. All right. We have the nine of voices, which is that of the nine of swords. You might be having a lot of sleepless nights. You might be having some extreme dreams coming through, okay? It's coming through. You're getting inspired. You're moving things out of the way. You're no longer, this is the hangman, you're no longer allowing the little things to get in the way. You're like the knight of wands, you're pushing through, you're making things happen, you are a firework, but you have the vision. You see that? You have the vision and you have the passion. And that is what is key. A lot of times we set a goal and we love, we can see it, but do we have the passion and the desire for it? Is it really your goal or is it somebody else's goal that they pushed on you so that you can make it your goal? Like when people say, I really think you should blah, blah, blah. And I really think you should keep it to your damn self. But anyways, a lot of people like to tell us what we're, what we should do, right? So this is maybe you breaking free from that. Okay, and I'm looking at Juan Tanamera over here. Okay, Queen of Pentacles. Look at you, Juan Tanamera. Ow. Yes, making it happen. You are coming in with this new moon like, look, I am the boss. I am going to show you how you get it done, and we're moving forward. This could be you, or this could be a person coming into your life who wants to help you move up financially, okay? I really feel a lot of finances are coming into play, a lot of materialistic things. This is the coin energy, the pentacle energy, and I feel like you're, you're moving forward, and the horse is representative of change, right? Big change is coming in and behind it you see this green like succulent right and so this green for me makes me think that there's changes even in your heart space coming out which leads to a fulfillment with the ten of pentacles this could be a new job coming in with this double ten right here okay it doesn't mean that everything's gonna be super freaking easy you gotta put some work in it the ten of pentacles could also mean inheritance coming in i'm telling you it's beautiful beautiful energy and everyone is connected and they're around you and they're supporting you because you're grounded and rooted in love now, the, I was about to say the influence is the Ten of Pentacles. I lost my count, my thought. And the advice is the Ten of Inspiration. This is the Ten of Wands. I got confused with this card earlier and I was like, how do they have cups? Like, why? So, the Ten of Wands is like, she knows what she's got to do. She's got all this water she's got to get up the hill. But she also knows that she needs some help. And so, the thing of it is like, you know you got a lot of shit to do. All right? You do. You do. But you can't do it alone. So you're going to use that energy, very strong energy to assist you to get up that hill because you are the six of wands. And this makes me think of Ishtar right here. Like, oh, my gosh, this is so beautiful. That star over her head. I kind of feel like all that hard work you've been doing, all that crap you thought wasn't going to pay off. It's about to pay off and it's going to pay off with all your hopes and wishes coming through. 
okay? So let's clarify. What does the Queen of Materials want you to know? You made the right decision with the lovers coming through. You made things happen. Things are moving, grooving. It could have been in love. It could have been with your boss. But this is about you actually being very strategic. Right now, Mars is in Taurus, right? And so this energy is coming through and it's like, look, we're not going to get comfortable. We're going to make a strategy and we're going to move forward because I got my mind on my money and my money on my mind. I also feel that it's important for you to learn where Mars is in your in your chart so that you can understand what you need to do to get your goals moving. Mars is the energy that pushes us to get up and go. So if you have Mars in Libra, right, you want to make sure everything is perfect. You want to make sure it's actually in fault, I think, in Libra, but because I think mine's in Libra. You get easy distracted because you want everything to be perfect and aesthetic and this and that and so you might you might not get things out as fast so if you understand that about yourself maybe you can partner someone who has a Mars and Aries who's like on you like no we're gonna do it let's go come on and so this kind of energy will help you propel you on your goals okay and I went off on a tangent and I'm sorry ten of coins I have two cards coming out what is this ten of coins about it's about completion there's something that needs to come to a completion I want you to take into consideration all the majors that just came out. We have here the lovers, the emperor, and the world, okay? 6421. Very interesting energy coming in here. What's interesting is there is a completion, and then we go right back to sacred geometry, and remember Metatron was in your read. So there is a cycle that is complete. Why? Because you made the right decisions, you were strategic, and now you're moving forward. And that's why it's the Ten of Pentacles. It's complete. Ten of, I always want to say Ten of Cups, but it's not the Ten of Cups, it's the Ten of Wands. Ten of Wands is saying the Eight of Pentacles. You've got to learn some new skills. The thing is, a lot of times we want to keep applying the same solution. And I'm very guilty of this also. Like, oh, I'll just do it this way because I've always done it. But is it working? Okay, is it working? I don't know. Now, what does this lead to? Look, another major huge transformations coming for you. I almost feel like this energy that's coming in is like you are ready to change. You have four majors right now looking at me. And then the influencer is saying, how are we going to do all these major things? Well, we got to what? Ask for help and learn new skills. So possibly what the right decision for you to do is to into implementing your goals and moving forward with this energy is to say, how can I move forward if I feel stuck? And if I feel stuck, I need to ask for help. Now, I have very strong Scorpio, Taurus, and Aries energy coming in. And I feel like maybe either that's you or this energy coming in to help you. The Queen of Pentacles with the Lovers. Some of y'all are like, I want love, I want money, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want... And I, you can have it all. But align your energies and complete things so that you can move forward. Let's look at what the lovers have. Oh, crap. That just flew out. Let's see what the lovers have for you. I had three cards come in. Number five, La Estrella. I really feel like communication is going to be key. 35 comes down to an eight. I feel like it's going to be important for you to speak up, make changes, and move forward. I do want to pull an Akashic card for you here at the end to kind of clarify death for you. There it is. He's coming in, the King of Scrolls. The King of Scrolls is an energy of work. It's also an energy of love coming in. Maybe you want to start teaching counseling or this person is in that field I even think architecture every time I look at it is a very educational type of field he could be a teacher an educator but this energy is coming in to either help you move up the ladder at work or bring in love okay very very interesting you end with the nine of emotions which is the nine of cups this energy is saying to you like let it be you've wished for this and it's so interesting because you have a star here which is the wish card for me and then this is a wish card and then she had the star on her head so i do feel like if there's some of y'all who are like in um social media or pushing a business an online business or even a regular business you're going to have a very star studded month or a star-studded start with this new moon, but it's going to be important for you to learn these new skills and possibly get help, okay? Get some help. 
learn from somebody. Nine of emotions, what do you have for me? I have this beautiful energy of the Knight of Cups. So I do believe there's some help on the way. There's a, probably an offer of love coming in. It's very, very beautiful energy coming in for you. Be sure to take advantage of it, all right? Because I see a lot of love. I see a lot of communication. I see online businesses blowing up. But if you don't put in the work, if you're not the Queen of Pentacles and you're not making the right decisions and you're not going forth like the Knight of Pentacles as the damn dirty emperor, you're not going to get to this part where you're going to get recognized. Okay. So let's look at your messages from, nope, let's go into love. Okay. Let's go into love. I want to see love real quick. I'm using the Illuminati tarot. Let's see what falls out. I'm just going to put them upright. Okay. A lot of cards fell out. So first card, number two again, and number two. Very interesting. You also have the Eight of Wands coming in for you like number one did. This is for my singles. But the Ten of Swords is coming out. So I feel like with this energy, with the Eight of Wands and the Ten of Swords, it's like, why are you communicating when you're still healing? Why are you trying to go out? I'm going to say it very rudely because there's, why are you out there trying to hold around and give it up to everybody in the world when you're still hurting about the person that hurt your feelings? It's time to work on your inner health and stop trying to get validation from outside. Okay. It ne you need a new fresh start. You need to become like the queen of wands and be picky about your kitty. Okay. <laughs> All right. Be a little picky because the real one or the right one. That commercial, y'all remember that Pepsi commercial? You got the right one, baby. It's coming through. And some of y'all need to make sure that you're wearing protection. All right, I'm going to leave it there. You got a gorrito coming in. Make sure you're using protection. Okay, for my boot up lovers, what's going on? What's going on, boot up lovers? We have here the King of Wands and the Prince of Cups. So we're making an offer, right? We're making an offer, but I don't, I'm not a big fan of this King of Wands because he's like just thinking about it. So I feel like maybe there's some miscommunication going on. And I'm going to say be very, there's like too many people in the situation, Prince of Wands. There might be some issues with children coming in and we're trying to discover how are we going to handle this situation? How are we going to move forward? Okay. This is not a time for you to bottle up your emotions. This is not a time for you to um, make, what is it called, ultimatums. But this is a time to communicate. Remember, we have a lot of squares going on. And if you make a rash decision, you're going to get a rash response. I'm just going to put it out there, okay? Now, moving on into our ancestors, you have the upper world coming in. You have the future. This is a spiritual experience is coming through beyond the outlook. Be on the lookout, baby. See the bigger picture. Honor your feelings. Keep your commitments. Make commitments. You are a natural healer, but it's time to embrace your life purpose. Okay? You are much more than your sun sign. You are the galaxy. You are the universe. Okay? You are stardust and everything magical. Now, it's important for you, like I said, look where your Mars is at. Pay attention to it. Heather is... Heather... Elin's astrology or something like that. I think this is what it's called. Absolutely love her. She did a whole segment on Mars and how to utilize it. So it's important. And she's on YouTube. You can look her up. Now, your guides are also telling you, be open to love and stop putting everything in a damn box, okay? It doesn't have to be a certain way. Just be open. You have the ever unfolding rose. I always have trouble saying that. Everything is going to be okay, but you have to come out of your shell. You have to expand. This gives me this Aphrodite vibe. I don't know why, but I do feel like love is on the horizon, right? But part of the reason why maybe it's not flowing the way that you want is because you're not really being yourself. There is some healing that maybe needs to come or some epiphanies that need to come, but it's happening for you, not to you is the phrase that it says. Be gentle. Treat yourself soft like a sweet, sweet baby. It's time for you to nurture yourself your guides are like look you want someone to love you but you're not even loving yourself would you even notice if somebody was being loving to you because how would you know if all you do is abuse yourself and you talk so negatively about yourself it's about being aware of how you treat yourself so that when you see someone mirroring how you treat yourself to you you're attracted to the right mirror okay 
Now, your health card here is that of the Two of Pentacles. The Two of Pentacles is that of balance. It's Jupiter and Capricorn. This could be skin issues, okay? A little bit of weight gain. Get your teeth checked. Your joints might hurt. Arthritis. Um, check on your immune system, okay? Really check on your immune system. So these are the things that are tied with the Two of Coins. Did I not put the... Oh, Yellow Dock Root is actually the herb that is tied to this, okay? Now, draws money. Oh, that's the hoodoo stuff. <laughs> I got only the hoodoo stuff, all right? So I'm going to tell you what it is. It brings you money to your business, and it brings in love. You can use it as a tea. You can use it in a floor wash. You can clean your doorknobs with it. It can be added to your money floor wash or a mojo bag, okay? Now, for a health use, it's great for nasal swelling, respiratory, um, and also used to treat STDs, which is possibly why I'm telling you to put a hat on it, okay? Now, too much of this can cause diarrhea, and do not use it raw or uncooked, and that, again, was yellow dock root. Your crystal is selenite. This is a crystal that never needs to be cleared. It clears other crystals. It's great for promoting meditation. It gets clarity into you, and it calls upon higher energy. Um, it helps you deal with the cycle of life, death, and rebirth. And this crystal signifies it's time for clarity and concentration. Stop the confusion. Stop clouding your judgment. You're really working with your third eye. All right? Now, when it comes to your magic or your ritual, it's about happiness. It's about really being happy about what's going on. And it's almost, maybe you need to redefine what happy is because there's been so many false teachings of what happiness is. Happiness isn't saying everything's okay when it's not okay. Happiness is realizing when it's okay and when it's not okay and being able to pick up and keep going and make it okay for yourself. It doesn't mean rose-colored glasses at all time. And so there's been this false preaching of like, if you are upset, then you are not spiritual. Excuse me, Jesus was flipping over tables in the temple and telling people what to do, okay? Because he wasn't playing with that. Because there is an essence of this belief system that because you're spiritual, you can't get mad and you can't be upset you are a human being having a human experience. Your soul is operating through a 3D material, okay? But in that moment that you're feeling unhappy, the thing is, is where we go to our higher power to assist us. And that is the beauty of happiness, okay? Because in order to know happiness, we must know sadness. In order to know good, you must know evil. It, you just can't be happy, happy all the time, okay? Ugh, no. So... For me, when I think of happiness, I'm going to give you a little ritual that I do when I need to raise my energy. I grab citrine, I grab clear quartz, or you can grab the selenite, right? I sit down, I will do a meditation, I will listen to Reiki music for my solar plexus, Reiki music to increase joy, I will envision myself doing something happy, I will watch a freaking comedy show if I have to, or my favorite, cat memes, okay? Cat memes are my favorite. I love to I love to laugh at the cats acting crazy. Do what makes you happy for at least five minutes a day for two weeks and journal about it and see how you feel. When you start feeling your mood go down, I listen to Tony Baker or like I watch him on Instagram because he's hilarious. He does voiceovers for animals and it makes me happy. Okay, stop thinking that you have to let every situation control you. You, my friend, are the one in control. All right, I am moving into number three. All right, number three. So moon and Capricorn, of course, but we are in the ninth house. The ninth house is ruled by Sagittarius. This is religion, philosophy, long distance travel, ethics, higher education, foreign cultures, um, teaching and publishing. Okay, so some of these things might be getting a little bit of nudge from this plant, from this beautiful new moon. So spiritually, the nurturing of the dedication to achieve your spiritual values. You might be going through a spiritual awakening right now. Feelings caused by or focusing on travel. You are thinking, I want to get the hell out of here. <laughs> I want to do something big, right? And reactions resulting from the rules imposed by what is to be shared? And I feel like the rules are making you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm about to lose it. Like all of this Capricorn energy coming in and 
as you're looking at 2021, this new moon is highlighting how are you going to free yourself from what you no longer want or no longer desire, okay? So let's go into your mind card, which is that of divine destiny, Grrr. okay? Now, this beautiful card is all about your resources, your inner resourcefulness and determination. You're like the fighter here, okay? You have to have great self-esteem, believe in your self-worth, your personal growth, you're moving with integrity, with deep spiritual values. Some of y'all have completely, like you're, you're discovering new ways and new belief systems, and it's making you kind of question which way to go, right? There are important teachings on the path of the feminine about the need to surrender and allowing for the best manifestation. The divine warrior is not at odds, but continually surrenders, I'm reading from the book what it says, into greater things. This comes at a time when there's something that you feel you've been struggling to get. Like you're, you're like on the struggle bus, right? And it comes to let you know that this challenge is not a sign to step away from the situation, but to have faith and to keep moving forward. You don't deserve less. You don't deserve anything that you don't want, right? Like you're really struggling here and you want to give up, but you're a warrior. And part of the struggle is making a decision because physically you're in an indecision. You're at a crossroads. You don't know what to do. Now, it's interesting that the number eight is up there because the eight is about um, travel, communication, I think of the eighth house, intimacy, taxes, other people's money. Like you don't even know which way to go. You're at an indecision, you're at a crossroads. And I kind of feel number three, you're ready to give up. You're like, shit, I have done enough, I've come so far. But usually when it's in the darkest of the dawn is when the morning comes, right? The darkest of the moments is when the sun shines. And I absolutely love this, this scepter that she has. It makes me think of amber, like the fossilized resin. And I feel like there is something with this golden energy coming in. And you look how she's gripping that scepter. Like, I got this. And then she has this vulture or hawk on her hand. And it's like trying to lead the way. Her face doesn't look like, I got this, eh? Got into world. She looks tired, and I feel like you're tired, but you're walking into your purpose. But there are some decisions that need to be made, okay? Now, you have Renette. I love this card. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm going to read a lot from the Book of Doors for you. And what's interesting is she has the onks in her hand, okay? Now, Renette means, or Ren, R-N-N, -N, means nourishment, and Wit, which is W-T-T, -T, is snake. Renette is the beneficent protective goddess of nursing. You are birthing something new, okay? She's um, She is always with Meshkanet and Shai. And like the three fates, these three interconnected principles always function together, all right? Now, in Egypt, the left side was considered the side of death, the breath of death was said to enter the body through the left ear while the breath of life entered to the right ear. Now, this is a part that I thought was interesting. As the goddess of harvest, Renette was identified with the form of Auset, which is, um, I want to say Isis, and also with Sasheta, both goddesses most strongly connected with Sirius and the transmission of cellular energy as nourishment, okay? Now, she was really involved with birthing. She was like the midwife, all right? And she is giving you wealth. So good fortune and wealth and nourishment to your body and soul are coming. But if in order for your soul to feel it and ready to move forward, you have to nourish it. And you have to nourish it by making the decision. And the decision could be putting yourself first. The decision could be moving in a different spiritual direction. But whatever that decision is... This is like the initiation time to make it, okay? Because remember, Capricorn is about structures and rules, and it's conjunct Pluto. And when it's got that energy by Pluto, it's transformative energy. So we are breaking through, and then we have all these squares going on that's causing us to really slop, slop to really stop and consider what's happening. All right, I'll be using the Muse Tarot to, um, oh, that's too many cards, to read. I'm clarifying with the Light Seers deck. 
And that energy, uh, the Light Sears deck and the Muse Tarot by Chris Ann. Absolutely love these cards. I got them from Hay House. They're super awesome. They feel great. And the artwork is freaking amazing, okay? It's just amazing energy. All right, they're just like all flying. Very interesting. I will say yellow has been a very strong color for all wreaths. So very interesting. We're working with like the confidence and the strength to move forward. Overall, the seven of emotions with this is the seven of cups. We have to make that decision. So I'm looking at the bottom of the deck. And I have the Six of Pentacles reversed, okay? Six of Pentacles reversed. We feel like we've overextended ourselves. There's no reciprocal energy. Um, we're, it's coming to an end because we're carrying the weight of the world on our shoulder. And we're listening to, like, everything going on. It's the Four of Swords. But we're going to heal. We're not carrying this energy anymore. Look how she's walking away from that. It looks so Beyonce-ish. She, she ain't got no time for this, Okay. Because it was manipulative energy with the magician reversed. And maybe you didn't feel creative anymore. So it's time to go. It's time to roll with the wheel. Now, as I look at this energy coming in, just very beautiful energy. We have the queen of inspirations, which is the queen of wands. Look at this beautiful energy. We have the cheetah there. And for me, like when I see the cheetah, this is about being really focused on your goals. Okay. And then we have the beautiful divine pyramid energy going on the sun in the back and i just feel like you're in your element i do feel like you're being supported i want to say there is support here because in the past you enter as the queen of wands you knew what you wanted but maybe you didn't know how to push that vision and so you have the page of voices in the present and this energy is like are you seeing things clearly her eyes are closed so you went into this you had your goals and everything but now you're fine-tuning this is like i'm gonna make sure very mercurian energy here i'm gonna make sure that everything is okay and i'm gonna make i'm gonna fine-tune my resolutions my goals my decisions my love life whatever it is and move forward because the hidden influence is that yes it's a it's a yes you have the sun here this is such strong solar plexus energy this is good health this is you really focusing on your health really maybe you're doing yoga maybe you started a new workout program but this is you focusing even on your breath okay now the hidden the the advice here is the three of cups and as I said earlier, she was part of the fates, right? Renette was part of the fates. I feel like there's two people in your life who are coming through to bless you. And you see how they have the two new moons and then a full moon? I would pay attention to those cycles that are coming up because they're going to move you to your passions again. You're going to feel re revived because that's what needs to happen. You see all this fiery energy and, and words, but we need to replenish our energy and we end with the page of materials, which is the page of pentacles. But she's dressed to the nines. She's finding things that reciprocate her energy. No longer pouring into things that are taking the energy, but there's like continuous flow. You do have two pages in your read. So for me, just be prepared. You're going to be receiving information. You're also going to be getting eye-opening information. And things are going to start budding and growing. Okay? But a decision must be made. All right, now let's clarify. What does the Queen of Wands want number three to know? The Three of Swords, you're getting over a heartache. You're getting over of a time of like pain. It could have been a relationship, a loss of a job, a loss of a family member, but it's some heavy pain that you're getting over. And you're having to fine tune, like maybe even looking at the brighter side. You're trying to find the brighter side. You're trying to see things differently. Should this be here? Should this be here? Should it be up? So I have the King of Pentacles coming in. So you have an offer coming in. This could be of love. This could be a job. It could be anything that's coming in, but it's something being offered to you. See how he's holding this, this like sun in his hand, this pentacle, and then you have the sun here. So I do feel like you overcame a situation that was very heartbreaking, very Queen of Wands style. You moved on with grace and essence. People probably didn't even know you had a minor breakdown or a major breakdown because you always hold it together. But you were able to keep things holding on. You were able to go forward and you have the King of Pentacles coming in, okay? 
So I do feel like maybe there was like even a love triangle, okay? Well, this card came out, so we have the sun, the confidence to move forward. 46 comes to a 10. A 10 is saying there's a new beginning, right? It's a one, and it's right by another 10. So for me, that's a job offer. Someone's getting a job offer. What's this about? Page of Wands. Go for it. Whatever's being offered, go for it because we want to move away from this energy. Even though you handled it like a damn dirty boss, like you are, you are on it. You got it, right? But we need support. And that's the thing is like with this Aquarian energy, we want humanitarianism. We want assistance. We want to connect. We're no longer trying to do everything by ourselves. And you have these people trying to support you with the hidden influence, right? The hidden influence is that is that we need the advice is to move on. We got to go. We got to go to calmer waters. We got to trust what they're telling us and there's those three right and we're going we're going to listen we're going to move forward because we want to get to this emperor energy we want to make the choice and make that decision that has to be made i feel like for you you're going to be uh, enlightened with some truth you're going to be given information so that you can move forward very strategically okay you're going to move forward and again i'm going to tell you what i told card number two Heather, uh, Heather Elin's astrology on YouTube, I think that's her name. She was talking about paying attention to where your Mars placements is so that you can make better New Year's resolutions and move forward. And I think that it's really important for you to be strategic. A lot of times we want to do things immediately. And when we don't see that fast results because we are all like we want instant gratification, we will give up. What this Capricorn energy from 2020 taught us is that, hey, Things were not going to change fast. You need to have a plan. You need to move forward. All right. Now, in order to move forward, number three, you got to make a decision. Are you able to make a decision? Are you going to stay at this job that makes you feel drained? Or are you going to take the one that really makes you feel like a boss? Okay. And then the moon is coming out. So it's an emotional situation. It's something that's really hard for you to make this decision. There's also something about travel, a trip. Maybe you, you're used to traveling for work and you're not traveling anymore. Or maybe you're going to have to start traveling. Remember, you had the ninth house. So there's a lot of stuff with travel. That moon by the sun is also telling me there's like some divine masculine feminine energies going on. There's also a need for balance. Okay. And I want to say pay attention to eclipse season because you're going to highly feel it. So I want to get a little bit of clarity on what that moon wants to tell you. So I'm going to go to, if I can find it, the Akashic Tarot. There it is. Because I want to know, I want to know what you're thinking. Ow, the muse. All right. What inspires you? What makes you excited? What gives you joy? Because we're no longer going to sit in this pain. And I'm going to say some of y'all really need to watch your back, like literally watch your back, but also do some back stretches and make sure you're taking care of that. Pay attention to your heart health. There's a lot of fiery energy in this read. So it's about finding your passion again. And passion isn't just in the bedroom. Okay, it's just not there. You need to find what excites you and makes you happy. All right, let's look at love. What's going on in love for my singles? I'm a single threes. I'm a single threes. Oh, Lord, single threes. What we got here? Two of wands and the alchemist, the magician. So I'm going to say, I'm looking at the pictures. I don't even care what the cards say. I see two people who aren't seeing the same thing. Like one person wants to go. One person's like, how can I make this work? I also see a situation where one person has more than the other. And the other one is turning their back on them. <sighs> there it is. The hermit reversed. You feel shut out. You feel left out in the cold and you don't like it. Okay. You don't like it. Um, and maybe you're focused on what somebody did to you in the past because he's looking at the three of swords, right? He's looking at that pain and he's like, I remember that. And the alchemist is like, look, I'm just working. I'm trying to do my thing. Why aren't you talking to me? And so there needs to be a clearing to come through. El Pino comes through. There needs to be a clearing. There also needs to be the idea of like, you can't grow a, a tree overnight. You can't grow a relationship overnight. It takes time to grow. And so in this, we see that the alchemist has all the items needed. And we have the person with the two of wands still looking at their heartache. And so the alchemist is trying to convince this two of wands to stay in this situation. And instead, there's no communication coming through with the hermit reversed. All right. Now, 
I'm going, oh, too many cards came out here, so let me see which ones. Is it one, two, no, one, two, no, one. okay. So, I have here the Seven of Wands with the Hierophant. I feel like some of y'all are really trying to protect your marriage. You're really trying to protect your traditional roles. You're trying to protect your relationship. You're trying to hold it together, and it's just been very hard. Overall, it's the Four of Pentacles. It could be financial situations, financial constraints that are holding you back. Maybe you met someone, you want to get married, you want to do this, but you're like, I don't even know if I can financially handle this. I don't even know what's next. I've lost my job. You know, I don't even know what we're going to do, but I really want to be with this person. Some of y'all are fighting off the marriage. Like, I don't know if I want marriage, you know, and we're holding on very tight to old ways. That's what this tells me, holding on to old ways. And so... If it's not working, we might need to reassess the plan, okay? And I got el camarón, which is the shrimp, which is number 30. So there is something that needs to be new, okay? And I know it's like, I want to say when I'm looking at this is don't blow things up. If it's small and it's not something huge to fight about, pick your battles wisely, okay? People are stressed out as it is. Try to, you know... Pick your battles wisely, my love. Pick them wisely. Okay, let's jump into your ancestral message. You have that of the east. Some of y'all are wondering where you're supposed to move. It might be to the east, okay? To the left, to the left. <laughs> Anyways, this is also telling you to keep a dream journal. Keep a record of your ideas. Start meditation. Your confidence and willingness to speak up is growing. Look at the little birds, okay? Okay. There's a new start coming for you, clarity, inspiration, rise at dawn, greet and embrace your, your potential, and visualization is needed and should be enhanced. Your guides also want you to learn to keep your commitments. If you say you're going to do it, freaking do it, okay? Stop making broken promises. And this is a time to rest and a time to be held. It's a time for renewal for you. OK, make sure you're getting enough sleep because your guides are telling you we're trying to give you messages, but you're so busy during the damn day. You're not paying attention. So the only time we can talk to you is at night. So make sure you're getting the rest that you need so you can get the messages that they're trying to give you. Now, your crystal is citrine, which is going to help with that solar plexus energy. It's um, um, solar plexus healing, gives you energy, cleanses your aura, also brings in prosperity. It's a great talisman for wealth and success. It's a very positive vibration, works with the solar plexus. And it, in um, a health read, it works with digestive issues, blood sugar issues, insulin. Um, also helps with the bladder and the kidneys, your menstrual cycle. And reduces fatigue now this card or this crystal indicates a need to look at your motives and honor yourself are you honoring yourself and I would say wear lots of orange and yellow for the next few weeks so that you can have the confidence to move forward now in a health read you have the four of cups this is moon and cancer um, this could mean issues with the stomach disease in the stomach um, swelling the edema obesity bloating a lot of digestive issues coming in um, dependency on drugs or alcohol or an eating disorder you might be um, what is it emotional eating like these are like going far and beyond you might notice that you're overeating or under eating okay and it could be tied to your self-esteem the herb tied to this is burdock it's great for clearing the skin and issues with fever um now when this this comes through okay you can mix it with olive oil and it can be made into okay all right i'm gonna give you a little little stuff over here okay it's no i'm gonna just give you this it's known as bat weed it's used for cleansing and uncrossing this is burdock okay mojo burdock plus rue plus agrimony and black snake root in a right bag okay mix with olive oil Oh, this is another thing. You can make you a little mojo bag with that, okay? Again, it's for uncrossing burdock root, agrimony, and black snake root in a white bag, okay? And that will uncross you. I also recommend with the crossroads, I feel like if you research a crossroads spell for you or an open, abre caminos, open roads, would also be something very good for you because this three of swords energy wants to attach and it's time to release it, okay? Now, you can mix burdock with olive oil and it can be made into a genital massage oil to clear a man. Interesting. I don't know where I get this stuff from. I don't even know where I got that from. But anyways, that's a little extra for you. All right. Okay, a little extra. 
Your magic or your ritual is all about new beginnings, starting a new chapter. And there's so many different ways you can do it. Like I said, an Abre Camino spell, an open roads candle, a clearing bath, an unhexing, an uncrossing. Anything like that is going to help you move forward so that you can start living in the present moment because there's new things awaiting you. I do feel like work is going to improve and I do think love is going to improve once we get past this. But do you see how you got past that? You made it out like a queen. You made it out like a queen, but it doesn't mean that it didn't hurt. So honoring your emotions as you process them and move forward, all right? Thank you so much, and happy new moon. If you're interested in a read, hit me up at arenaluciano at gmail.com or on my link tree. Love ya.